Have you guys been following the news? <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like we could be doing better. Like a whole lot better. Do you think we can make a difference out there to help solve some of the big challenges facing us today? Yes, I do. I do too. But I think we need some inspiration. Inspiration to come together, see past our differences, see, see ourselves as part of something bigger. And where does that inspiration come from? Can you think of another time when the world needed inspiration? 1968. Martin Luther King Jr. and Bobby Kennedy were assassinated. The Vietnam War raged with no end in sight. Riots broke out all over the world. And then, the crew of Apollo 8 gave us a Christmas present in the form of their now famous Earthrise photo. No one had ever seen this view of Earth before. It was like seeing your child's face for the first time, like watching her take her first steps. It was a glimpse of the future. And among the millions of telegrams the crew received when I got back to Earth was one that said, congratulations to the crew of Apollo 8, you saved 1968. And then the following year, half a billion people put aside fear and anger and all the other troubles of the 1960s all over the world to watch two of their fellow humans walk on the moon. When the moon program became a symbol of hope for the future, people started saying, well, if we can go to the moon, why can't we fill in the blank? But um, we never went back to the moon. It's emblematic of our other troubles. We're as divided as we've ever been. The government's deadlocked. No one can seem to get anything done. We've lost our inspiration. Or have we? And when I was six years old, I picked up a book from the public library that changed my life. It was called Rocket Ship Galileo by Robert Heinlein. It was about a group of high school students and a university professor who build their own spaceship out in the desert and they fly to the moon in it. This is the most amazing thing I'd ever heard. I thought, could I do something like this one day? Could somebody I do do something like that? It was, it was just science fiction. Uh, you, you know, you need a government program to get to space, right? You need a gazillion dollars and an army of people to do anything of that magnitude. So I became a science fiction writer. And I wrote software manuals to pay the bills. And then a group of actual people in an actual desert, built an actual spaceship. And in 2003, test pilot Brian Binney went supersonic in it. I thought, their next flight's going to space. But forget science fiction, I gotta write about this. This is real. So I made a list of every newspaper, magazine I could think of, just started calling them up. Have you heard about Spaceship One? No, okay, well you, you gotta have someone down there on the ground to cover it. My heart pounded as I made these calls. I had no idea how I was going to pull this off. I had no training as a journalist. I had never written a news story. Most turned me down. But the New York Post and Chronogram gave me assignments to cover that first privately funded space flight on June 21st, 2004. And over the course of three space flights that year, I rode Spaceship One's contrail into the clouds. By the end of it, I was writing for Reuters. I had landed my first cover story with popular science. Before Spaceship One, no one thought a small private company could get to space, let alone do it for just a few million bucks. Before Spaceship One, a science fiction fan and technical writer never dreamed of writing cover stories for big magazines. It's all a matter of perspective. This view of Earth from space, this one is taken by Brian Benny, but the view of Earth from space shows us that we are part of something bigger that we can reach beyond what we think of as possible, that we are all so much more alike than different. It's easy to feel paralyzed by all that needs to be done. Paralyzed, and stuck just looking at the news and feeling down about all the things that separate us or seem to separate us. But all you have to do is look up Space, it's only 62 miles away. It's within reach. Everything you want to do is within reach. 
everything we need to do collectively to solve our big problems. We're in a new era of space flight, powered by private enterprise. Private companies are getting us there for the price of a ticket. Now, if a private company can get to space, what new heights can you or your organization reach? What would the world look like if we all started asking, why not, instead of why? What's your personal moonshot? Look around you. Everyone here has their own personal moonshot. That thing we just love to do if only you didn't think it was impossible. We don't need a billion dollars. You don't need an army of people. But we do need each other. So really, right now, I really would like you to turn around and take the hand or the shoulder or the... Just reach out, just touch somebody next to you. Yeah, that's right, because <laughs> together, together we can do anything. Together we can overcome our individual limitations. Together we can reach the stars and change the world. Thank you.